Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at the area enclosed by the y-axis, um, looking at uh, definite integration. Um, I know you're probably thinking, okay, you've probably got a good grasp of what's going on. You've just done the area enclosed by the x-axis. If you haven't done so, please go back and watch that. It's very important. Um, but you think, hey, I'm doing pretty well at this stuff, then, uh, you know, we're going to throw this one at you, and I won't lie, this uh, this is certainly a bit more challenging. So what's this one about? Well, you know, let's have a look at what we've done so far. You know, so far what we've had, we've had, you know, your x and y axis, and we've given you a graph, something like, you know, y equals x squared, and, you know, a couple of points, for example, um, maybe 0, and four, and we've asked you to find, you know, written something like this, um, the integration between four and zero of um, x squared dx, where that was f of x equals x squared. Okay, and that meant that you're finding the area between the curve and the x-axis between those two um, points or, that, or those two intervals. So, what's a y-axis mean? Well it's going to be a little bit different. What the y-axis will do, if I looked at this same function, so look there, of f of x is equal to x squared, what this is going to do is it's going to look at the integral on the area between the curve and the y-axis this time. Okay, which is going to be slightly different as you can see, and yeah, it's a little bit more challenging. Um, the way we look at it, I guess, you know, if we, we've used our integral rules before with b and a. I guess if you looked at it over here, we've got b and a, we've got um, f of x dx, okay, where that's what the y is equal to, you know, y is equal to x squared. With this one, it's going to be a similar thing, but instead of being f of x, we're doing f of y dy, okay? Um, which means that instead of having um, y is equal to, we want to have x is equal to. So it's going to be slightly different because obviously at the moment that's in the form of y is x squared. What we'd have to do is put it into the form of x is equal to. Um, in this case, it'd be the square root of y, plus a negative, of course, which makes it look um, thereabouts because you can see uh, that is a, uh, a square root graph. Um, so slightly different, okay? Um, don't get too concerned. They want you to do a few of them. It, you know, it is okay. It's um, just a little bit more challenging. So let's have a look at the question. Find the area enclosed by the curve x equals y squared. Well, hey, they've actually made it nice and easy. They've already got in the form of x is equal to the y-axis and the lines y equals 1 and x equals 3. So what that means, and I guess drawing these graphs are a little bit more challenging because you need to know what the graph x equals y squared looks like. Um, you might remember that x equals y squared is in the form of a parabola, okay, but it's going to be like a sideways one, sort of like this. It's a pretty poor parabola, okay, but it's a parabola, it's sideways, it's um, got my y axis, my x axis. So, what this is asking me to do is to find the area between the curve and the y axis, the line y equals 1 and the line equals y equals 3. So this point here and this point here. So what we're looking for is the area between there. So again, you can see drawing the uh, the graph is certainly beneficial. So what it's asking me to do is to find the, uh, the integral between 3 and 1 of y squared dy. Now remember, that's what my x value is going to be, so we need to put the x value in. Sometimes it might not give it to you in that form, it might give it to you in the form of y is equal to, and you need to create it in that form like we saw that last example. But the good thing is once you get that part of it, then the rest of it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, we know it's a definite integral, so we need to integrate it as we would usually. Same thing, I know we had x before, all the other questions, we've got a y, same thing. Just add the 1, make it 3, divide by 3, 
3 and 1 and now everything else is exactly the same alright so now we're just going to substitute so 3 cubed is 27 over 3 okay that's the first one minus put in the 1 cubed is 1 over 3 okay which is going to give me 27 over 3 is 9 minus a third which is going to equal to 8 and 2 thirds units squared so actually, I know I kind of maybe frightened you a little bit to make this look really challenging. It's actually not too bad. It's just a little bit different. Okay, a little bit different, particularly when you have to rearrange the equations. Um, like the other questions, though, you know, I guess if it's above the y-axis, so I guess to the right-hand side of it, then it's going to be a positive definite value. If you had a question which is below, let's say, for example, you had a question like that, then it was below the y-axis, then that'd be a negative value. So you've got to be careful about which ones you're using. You know, do you have to split it up into two different sections like we've seen in some of the harder questions? Okay, um, again, I know this is tough, but let's just bear with me. Find the area enclosed by the curve y equals x squared. Okay, y equals x squared and the y-axis. Okay, y equals x squared. Well, we can draw that. It's not a bad one to draw. Okay, we drew that one in the first example, if you recall. That's y equals x squared. So we want to, um, and it says the y-axis, so we know it's going to be the y-axis. So there's 0, and there's 4. I'm going to draw a line there. So I'm going to be looking at this area inside here. All right. So again, it's very important if you can draw that and sketch it and so you can see where the area you're looking for. Why that helps me is that I know if I'm finding it between the graph and the y-axis, then when I do my integral between 4 and 0, it's of the integral of x is equal to. Now unfortunately, this is in the form of y equals x squared. So we need to put this in the form of x equals and we're going to put x equals the square root of y. Now, we should have that plus and minus there theoretically. All right. But it does say in the first quadrant, which means that we're going to be taking the positive value. Okay. The positive value. Um, I'm also going to, just instead of writing square root of y, I'm going to write as y to the power of a half. Okay. Dy. So that's the hard part, all right? Once you get to that spot, then the rest of it should be pretty straightforward. I'm going to integrate it, and we get y to the power of 3 over 2 over 3 over 2 with 4 and 0. If you want to put that as 2y, 3 over 2 over 3, you can do that, but I'm just going to leave it that way. That's no dramas. Um, I'm going to substitute into it, so 4 to the power of 3 over 2 over 1.5 or 3 over 2 so I'll simply substitute into it minus brackets 0 to the power 3 over 2 over 3 over 2 again that's going to be 0 you can see it's going to be 0 so you don't really have to put it there um, but simply put that into your calculator now and you should come up with the answer um, of 5 and 1 third by the looks of things units squared so that should be pretty much about right now again you can see once I get to that spot here this bit here it's actually not too bad everything else is the same but I guess that's the hard part of this um, style of question it's getting to your integral that's the hard part okay um, all right let's have a look at a more challenging question now I'll say more challenging, these are all pretty more challenging. So find the area enclosed, or oh, I might just do a bit of a sketch first of all. So we've got between the curve y is equal to the square root of x plus 1, the y axis, and the lines y equals 0 and y equals um, 3. Okay, so this is certainly going to be a bit more challenging. So how do you graph this? Um, look, you mightn't recognize this is going to be um, a sideways parabola again. Um, how do I know that? Well, if I square both of them, 
um, we get y squared is equal to x plus 1. So I'm left with x is equal to y squared minus 1, which means I'm going to have a parabola with a turning point at negative 1, or an x-intercept at negative 1, and sort of go like that, I guess. Um, how can I find this point here? Well, again, you know, you just that's the point x equals 0. When x equals 0 and y is equal to 1, square root of 1 is 1. Um, if you're not particularly sure, um, maybe just substitute some points, put a couple of x values in, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. You should get what the graph's going to kind of look like. Um, okay, so I've got my little graph there. Find the area enclosed between the curve y equals the x-axis y equals 0 and y equals 3. All right, so that's 3 and that's 0. Now this, my friend, is going to be a bit difficult because what you've got here is the area between the curve and the y-axis there. But you also have got, it's going to hard to see, that graph's going to continue on, the area on that side of it. Now this is kind of like that cubic one we saw when we were looking at the x-axis, where some of it is above or to the right-hand side of the y-axis and some of it's to the left of it or below it which means we're going to have to separate this okay hence that point there is very important all right so what we need to do we need to find the integral start off with between 3 and 1 of this graph now the problem again with this graph is not a hard question it's in the form of y is equal to now we've already rearranged it over here to make x is equal to so i can put that over there all right y squared minus one dy um, i'm then going to add that on to the absolute value of the integral between one and negative so one and zero because that's the y value there is zero of y squared minus one dy so that's what we're looking at again you can see how important drawing that graph is going to be um, all right from there the rest of it should be pretty straightforward all right um, should be let's have a look so we get y cubed over 3 minus y is 3 and 1 plus the absolute value of y cubed over 3 minus y and 1 and 0 absolute value now I'm just going to move this up a little bit um, and then that last part realistically well the second last part is substituting into it so 3 cubed is 27 divided by 3 is 9 minus 3 minus um, y so 1 cubed is 1 over 3 minus 1 and for this point I'm going to put some of these brackets these fancy brackets then we've got 1 cubed which is 1 over 3 minus 1 minus and 0 minus 0 well it's going to be 0 isn't it really um, let's have a look there alright so if we now put that into our calculator we're going to have a quick look to see what we're going to come up across um, now looking at this, so I, uh, I'm going to have on the right hand side, so left hand side, on the left hand side, oh, make sure that's a plus, sorry my bad, um, left hand side, if we put that into calculator we get 20 over 3, now plus, now remember this is the absolute value here, because that's going to be one third minus one is minus two thirds. The absolute value of that is positive two thirds, which gives me 22 over three, which if I put that as an improper fraction, sorry, as a mixed number, we get seven and one third units squared. Now, if you can uh, understand that last question, guys, you're doing exceptionally well. That is a really tough question. Um, again, just to recap that, the question asked between the um, the y-axis, okay, which meant that we have to use that integral with b and a of x dx, x dy, sorry, um, 
In this case, it was in the form of y is equal to, where we wanted to change that to get x is equal to. We did that over there. We actually did that to help us draw the graph, to be honest. Um, that might help you, might not, doesn't really matter. Um, but at, in the long run, we need to have it. So we did that. We then realized as well that we were going to have a negative area on the bottom part or the left hand side so as well as a positive value so we had to split them up into those two different sections just like we did with the uh, the cubic graph in that uh, that first lesson on the x or last lesson should I say around the x-axis um, once we did that you know it's just a simple matter of applying your integral or integration rules Okay, um, certainly it's not an easy um, feat, guys. Um, you have to put a lot of effort into this particular question. They like to test this one in the HSC. Uh, they do, of course, like to get a little bit more challenging again, but certainly they like to do those style of questions where um, it's not just the x axis, it is the y axis, and you have to sort of rearrange things a little bit and have a bit more of understanding about what you're actually doing. And that's why. Uh, sort of drawing those graphs or sketching those graphs really will help your understanding um, with this topic. Okay, 3.7 in the red book, page 109. Have a crack, any problems let me know. Certainly there are going to be some problems, so I'll try to get the solutions out to you as soon as possible. Have a great day.